Yo, what's up, bro? Then welcome back to another FO Studio update video. We're at 20.8 and we got a few new things to take a look at. So let's just jump right into it. Um, keep in mind, this isn't like a, a tutorial on how to use every single new feature. This is more me just showing you like what you'll get in this new update. So um, first off, I want to show you guys Fruity EQ2. We kind of had this new visualizer inside of it. Um, it's called a histogram and uh, it looks like this. So they added like these waveforms to it. Um, Fruity EQ basically used to look like this. I'm sure everyone's familiar with that, but they added these wave waveforms to it, and that's pretty cool. You can also um, you can also get rid of the original. Uh, it's called the heat map, the original way of looking at it, and just have the histogram. And um, you can also change like the position of the heat map so you can put it on top you so you'll have like the uh, heat map on top and the histogram on the bottom or you can kind of combine the two which actually looks really cool to me so that's kind of cool um there's a bunch of new options here inside of a uh, Fruity EQ2. We got this pivot uh, slope where you can basically just change, move uh, the focus of the EQ so we can put it all the way on the low end and you'll see it'll be more focused on the low end. And then we can bring it up to 60B and it'll be more of a focus on the higher end. Of course, it's gonna matter what exactly you're EQing because every uh, signal is different. But as you can see, uh, it's more of a focus on the high end. So we're just going to keep that in the middle. And we got um, range. So we can change how big or small you want just the overall range to be. So if I put it at negative 60 dB, you'll see just the waveform just get way smaller. And if we put it all the way up to 120 dB, you'll see it get bigger. And the reason why you would change these settings just for more accurate EQing uh, so just put that back to the middle and we get these uh, frequency precision so this basically means like the resolution of your image so how detailed you want your um, your visualizer to be so if you put it to the low you won't get many like peaks and valleys as you can see you know just a lower image but if you put it to the highest, you'll get a lot more peaks and just a more detailed image. I think it's a little easier to see if I turn off the heat map. So as you can see, tons of peaks and valleys. If we put it to the lower setting, you know, it's just like a lower resolution image. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's other features here. Um, I'm not gonna go into every single one, but I will talk about the linear phase because uh, that's like a big part of um, this whole update. The linear phase button right here. Uh, basically what this does is that it intentionally adds latency to your audio to prevent any phasing issues. Now that's like an over simplified definition of what it's doing, but Nonetheless, that's pretty much what it's doing. And I guess um, I can kind of show you what I mean. So I'm just going to put a kick in the channel rack. Um, let's put an Edison on the master. We'll hit uh, record on play. And we'll just record this kick with um, the linear off first. Okay, cool. Let's go into the arrangement window and let's just take that um, audio sample and just throw it in the arrangement. Now we're going to do the same thing, except this time we're going to turn the linear face on 
And remember, like I said, this is going to create latency. So, back in channel rack, back into Edison. Let's delete all that. And same thing, we're going to record it now. Okay, cool. Let's throw it in the arranger. Now let's zoom in. Make these bigger. And as you can see, the first one, which is uh, the linear phase off, you see that the audio starts right at the very beginning. But the second one with the linear phase on, you can see that there's a bit of latency right at the very beginning. So if you're asking yourself like, when will I use this? Why will I use it? Like, what's the point of it? Um, to be honest, you probably won't use this feature a whole lot. Um, that's probably why it's just now being introduced into FL Studio after like 20 something years. But um, yeah, what I suggest is look up a video on uh, phase and linear phase EQ. There's a ton of really good tutorials on YouTube of like just people explaining it 10 times better than I could ever explain it. So um, if you're interested in all that like real, like real technical audio stuff, I suggest you uh, look that up. And um, yeah, let's move on to the next thing. All right, so next up is probably the main feature of this upgrade, and that is the frequency splitter. Now what this is, is a three band EQ, but it allows you to take those three bands, split them up and send them back into the mixer, each on its own channel. And that allows for just a ton of creativity. And um, before we get into setting that all up, let's just talk about some of the parameters and things that are going on here. So just like the Fruity EQ2, the visualizer style is the histogram. But I do believe you can enable the heat map and all that kind of stuff that we talked about already. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what that looked like. So you have these three sections here, crossover, main out, and sends. So the main out is basically just like your basic EQ settings. So you have your high, mid, and low, and you can boost and cut or uh, mute out. And the crossover section is where you can basically change where you want your crossover to be. And you can change the steepness of the slope. So if you want something really aggressive, you can change it to 96, which basically makes a vertical line going down. And that looks like that. And you just have a really harsh uh, cut off. Or if you want something a bit softer, um, not nearly as aggressive, you can change it to 60 B and you have a much more shallow slope and you have a bunch of different options in between. So let's put this back to default. So you see when like I move the bands, they kind of like push each other. So you can avoid that by just hitting this link option right here. And this way they move all together and that could definitely be helpful. And if for some reason you only want two bands instead of three, you can just hit that. And now you have two bands that basically gets rid of the middle section. All right, so how can we get um, each of these bands into separate channels into the mixer? Well, first thing we gotta do is let's set this back to default and let's go into the mixer. Let's just name this piano track one. That is where our frequency splitter is. And we need to side chain it to three different tracks. So I'll just use um, track two, track three, track four. Side chain, side chain, side chain. Now um, I'm gonna name them. So I'll just name this low. medium and high. Okay, cool. So let's go back into our frequency splitter. So now under the, the set, uh, sends section here, you see that we have a low, uh, mid and a high knob. So what we want to do is right click this little uh, target thing here and we'll click low, medium and high. And as you can see, it's going to track two, three, and four, which is what we side chained, uh, what we side chained to earlier. So 
basically you can name it anything you want of course but you can also make like a compressor bus or a reverb bus if you want to send like maybe just the highs to a reverb um, auxiliary or something like that I mean you can get as experimental as you want with this basically so now we have all three bands each on different uh, channels <laughs> So if you want to solo just the mids, you simply just solo it. If you want to solo just the highs, or just the lows. And you can also do things like, let's say for some reason you want to pan your lows um, left. So we can pan some of the lows left. And you want your um, highs to be panned right and um, you want your medium to be right in the center. And let's say for some reason you want just some reverb on your highs. So we can put a fruity reverb two on the high section and we can give it some decay, increase the room size. And now we'll just have um, reverb on the highs. Cool. And it's important to note that um, these knobs in the send section, this is basically post-processing. So if I increase the uh, highs here, it's also gonna increase the reverb. As you can very obviously hear. So yeah, that's basically just a quick uh, rundown of the frequency splitter. Um, there's also a lot of linear phase options here, much more than the regular EQ, um, because you're dealing with different cutoffs and everything. So it would make sense that there's more um, phase options here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the frequency splitter. So they also added this tuner, which could obviously be used for a lot of different things. You can tune a guitar, you can find the note of the sample, you know, especially like an 808 or something like that. Um, or even vocals, like if you're trying to hit an F sharp, you could use this as a reference to help you out to see if you're hitting that note. And um, I guess we'll just do a quick example. I'll throw an 808 in the channel rack, throw it in the mixer, and we'll just see what note uh, this tuner is saying this 808 is. And it is a G sharp. So there you go. You can change the size. You can have it like this instead. This looks more like a, a guitar tuner, like this style. Um, so yeah, that's the tuner. I could definitely see myself using that. Oh, this was kind of a disappointment, the flex. Um, so I saw like arpeggiator, like, I just read it. Like I saw a flex and arpeggiator. I got excited. I thought they were actually adding like a real arpeggiator to flex. Um, but really all it is, is an on and off switch for things that are already arpeggios. So it's really nothing that special at all. Um, so if we go under tags um, and we click arpeggio, we'll just click any one. And we see under the pitch option here, the pitch little section here, you see this little thing lit up orange. It's our arpeggio, arpeggiator logo. So if we click that, the arpeggio turns off. Click it on, and the arpeggiator goes back on. So, I mean, yeah, nice to have, but what I thought, like, what I thought was happening was, um, like how Nexus has a whole arp section where you could you know, change each note individually, uh, change the speed, change if you wanted to go up or down, you know, all these different kind of things. I thought we were getting something like that. Um, my guess is we probably will eventually, um, but for now, it's just like an on and off switch for things that are already arpeggios. And um, 
I think those are pretty much all the main um, upgrades. I'm not sure if I'm missing stuff. I mean, there's definitely stuff I'm missing, like smaller things. Like I think there's something um, in the visualizer, the CGE visual visualizer and stuff. But I think these were the main things. And um, yeah, uh, let me know what future like future updates you want to see to Atlas Studio. I know a lot of people are saying they want to update to SliceX and just um, an update to the sampler and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.